This video is going to go over a few modifiers that are essential for doing architectural visual visualization work. That's what I do primarily. So I know a bit about the modifiers. You can see I have a custom toolbar made over here on the right side. Uh, these are the modifiers that I use often. Um, let's go over a few basic ones here just to show you how they work. If we start with a basic rectangle here, um, this could be a wall of a house, this could be a wall of a building. Um, if we turn that to an editable spline, doing this, then we can make it look more like a wall with a basic door in it. I like to turn these all to corners. Sorry, you don't need to see this part. Uh, okay, so say we have a spline like this, and we're using that as the wall for our house. Easier this way than to make an edit poly. Um, but what you need to do is, once that's a spline, use the normal modifier. Very basic stuff, very simple. That's my button here, but it can also be also uh, found in the modifier stack here. Modify normal, and what that does is turn that into a little solid there. Okay, so that was the normal modifier. Very easy. You can also use it can also be used to flip normals if you uh, have some backwards ones. And the normal, of course, is just the face of this polygon. Um, they can be facing in either direction. Um, okay, so let's say instead of putting a normal on it, we use the extrude modifier, which I have as a button here. This can turn it into a wall with thickness. It's another way to make a wall. Um, and that's pretty basic. Now if we wanted to take this and turn this into a an edit poly, we can use the edit poly modifier, which is somewhere right there. Um, and then we can take this and edit it as if it's a polygon. So if we wanted to miter the corners so that it can go together with another another wall, we could do that. I actually prefer to just convert it to edit poly at this point. But if you want to save your modifier stack, the edit poly, poly, poly modifier is the way to go. So here, if we clean this up a little bit, you can see what what we could do to make some basic walls. Beautiful. Um, now, obviously, there's some. Uh, some other kinds of shapes we can make that are that do not involve simple walls like this. Um, one of the most often things used in anything is something like a sweep. Um, a loft kind of does the same thing as a sweep. The sweep is much more simple. Um, loft is better when making really complex shapes that need to change uh, sizes and shapes as they go along a spline. Um, okay, so the sweep for the sweep we could make a little eave on this house or something like that. Um, in fact, let's just leave leave it like that. Oh. Sorry, we got to put two and a half snap on. Now, so that's the that's the shape we want to sweep, and we want it to sweep along that line there. 
One trick is to hit Shift O so you can only that turns off any objects in your scene, leaving only the splines. Shift O. If you hit Shift S, that'll turn off all the splines. We want to see the splines right now so we can work with them easier. So you select the line you want to sweep sweep along. You put a sweep modifier on it. You use a custom shape and pick that shape right there. You've got to unhide objects to be able to see it. You can see in the sweep there's some basic settings here. We can mirror, mirror the sweep, um, and then you can align it, align the pivot until it's in the right spot. That's where we want it, right there. Um, so that can be an eave of the house. Um, that's a basic way to sweep. Um, sweeps can get very complicated, obviously. You can do railings, moldings, all those kind of things. Take any profile and, and make it follow a uh, any given spline. Um, let's see, let's use some other modifiers here. If we take, take this rectangle here, make it into a roof, um, or, or draw a line uh, along the line where we want a roof. Convert it to a um, actually put a modifier on it again to make it a solid. Turn it into a edit poly. Um, one thing we can do within edit poly is a cut command, which will slice up this polygon. Want to do it along the edges. This is probably not the cleanest way to actually do this, but just for demonstration purposes. You now see that that thing's sliced. This will give us an opportunity to look at another modifier that we need to use a lot. Let's see here. Okay, so if we take that center vertex, bring it up, we have something of a roof. Oh! can see something on our sweep modifier that uh, we need to change. When we have crisp edges that we want here, we need to turn off smooth path. And you can see right there what that did. So it's no longer smoothing around, the, rounding around that, uh, that edge there. It's now making a crisp edge. Um, and that brings us to another modifier, the smooth modifier. Uh, <coughs> By default, things will smooth kind of their own way, especially the standard primitives. They all smooth in a specific way by default. Um, the smooth modifier can basically override that. So what putting that smooth modifier on that roof did was take any smoothing off as these um, faces interact with each other. You can see if I turn it off, they will kind of smooth themselves around that corner. We want a crisp edge there. So this is overriding that telling it to do no smoothing basically um, and of course you can go in and turn on auto smooth change the angle to a lower angle or a higher angle if I get up around 40 then they start uh, they start, or I guess it's 45, they start smoothing themselves again but we don't need any smoothing on this so that's another important modifier um, and let's show you one more. There's, uh, say, we wanted that roof to have a little bit of thickness. The shell modifier is is a is a good one for that. Um, you can find lots of different purposes for the shell modifier. But what it does is it puts a little, it extrudes those faces and puts a little thickness right there um, <coughs> to that roof. I use the shell modifier a lot if I use. Um, polygons. Let's show you an example. If I'm making like a glass rail or something like that, then you can take a basic rectangle um, you can turn this into an edit poly here and then take these two edges and connect them a couple times And this is an example of how to make glass rail. This will show you some modifiers within the Edit Poly tool too. If you take those same edges now, the ones that are highlighted in red, and chamfer, and check this box to open the chamfer, like that, 
make it a little smaller. Um, now you have these these squares that are all broken up, and then that's where the shell modifier can come in to turn this into a nice glass railing with some thickness to that glass. Um, and what that does is it makes it look more realistic when you look at it from an edge, and it makes the light refract more um, accurately through there because it's modeled like a real piece of glass instead of just a plane. So that's just one of the many things you can use a shell modifier for. One other, vi one other very basic um, but widely used modifier would be the lathe. Um, this is good for making things like lamps or pots or a glass, anything like that. And all this does is takes it takes any spline that you make, any shape that you make, and it uh, does exactly what it says, lathes, lathes it around a center point. You can lathe it around the max or the minimum of that of this spline or the center of the spline and of course as always you can adjust in sub-object mode where that axis is going to be exactly select the axis here um, so you can see that as you move that it's changing the axis that that's going to be rotating around um, so pretty straightforward but a very important tool Let's look at one other thing here. Um, if you have a lathe like this, and actually let's take away this this top here and go back to that lathe. Now if you want this closed, you can use the cap holes modifier and it will just close up that hole right there. It's another important modifier. Close up the bottom too. So it treats it, uh, it's the same as having this as an edit poly I'll just show you the other way to do that. My computer responds here. Um, if if this was an edit poly, you could select the the border, which is the open edges around here, and you could use this cap right there. Um, and that will do the same thing essentially. Or you can just use that cap holes modifier and keep your modifier stack available without having to collapse it down to an edit poly. So that's another important modifier to use for uh, architectural visualization or really anything. But um, these are the basic modifiers that you use the most. Uh, there's many other available that maybe I'll cover in another video. Um, one last one is just the simple uh, UVW map modifier. Um, and probably most people know about this already but you put the UVW map modifier on there and you can use cylindrical mapping you'll see my gizmo um, right now it's facing the wrong direction this is an easy thing to map because it's circular so you obviously use the cylindrical align it to the x-axis you can fit it to make the gizmo the size of that uh, object so that if your material is set to tile um, one time in each direction then oh, I don't have my render set up here then uh, it will it will tile one time around that <clears throat> around that little urn we have there um, the only other tools I have over here are open group, closed group those are uh, some other things that you use uh, quite often um, so hopefully this is helpful, these are basic modifiers Again, hopefully we'll get to some more complicated ones next time. Um, I know my scene's not beautiful, but hopefully there's a good demonstration of how some of these modifiers work.